okay, link state routing protocols came out later, and link state routing protocols are a little bit more efficient. And the way they work is they keep track of the state of the link, the network connection in between devices. The routers will advertise changes in the state of the link. So if a link comes up, it will advertise to all the other routers with a little packet about that one link and say, hey, all you other routers, this link is up and you can now use it. Or if the link goes down, it will send a message out to all the routers saying, hey, this link is down, stop using it. When a link state routing protocol turns on, there is a flurry of communication about all of the up links. All right, so the links that are all in the state of up will be communicated with all the other devices in this fury of communication. And what that does is it populates a table called this network topology table of some kind. And that network topology table contains a list of all the routes in the network and all the possible paths to all the possible routes. What happens then is the router and the routing protocol then use this map of the network topology with all of the possible paths. It uses an algorithm then to build the routing table. So it'll take the information it learned through all these link state information packets. It will use that to build the topology map, then use the topology map to build the routing table. If a link state changes, it causes the topology map to update, and then you rebuild the routing table. We have open shortest path first here as one of these routing protocols, and another one is intermediate system to intermediate system. You see open shortest path first used extremely widely because it truly is a non-proprietary protocol. It's been around for eons. It's well known and well supported. ISIS is also well known and well supported. Internet service providers oftentimes make use of ISIS. You don't see it as often in enterprise unless it's a very large enterprise. OSPF and EIGRP are very comparable as far as their performance and general operation. More so they're similar in their performance than they are in their operation. So most organizations you will see debating implementing either EIGRP or OSPF. And in some cases, like I had to do, you had to implement both because there is a more sophisticated environment you needed to accommodate.